Welcome back, and in this lesson, we're gonna add a little offset to the corner here. If you look in the top left corner of this example that I originally made, you can see these cubes are falling in from the top left. And so I wanna add that, but before we do, we need to adjust the helper plane and the ramp so that it actually only goes around one time. If we look at this reference, which I kinda like, we can see that this reference has a much larger, smoother transition and I think it's due to the, it probably has less noise and it's not going around as many times. So we can see it kind of starts here in the top and the left side. And then it goes all the way around to the back, back around uh, counterclockwise up here. I think ours is going clockwise. So let's just adjust it to be like this reference. And this is anytime you're, you know, want to mimic something that's happening in a commercial, always kind of start to analyze what what is it that I like about this? Why am I trying to emulate this and what aspects do I need to copy or, you know, try to recreate? And for me, in this first example that I, I created this um, and just trying to recreate it for you in this class is it goes around one time and it's a lot smoother than what we have. So let's just make that adjustment real quick and then we can do the offset. So let's go into the ramp of this. Let's open up the attribute editor, scroll all the way over to the map helper. And let's just reduce the noise. I'm gonna click this little button to get over. Oh, and also I turned off the green click button. Anytime I click, it's not gonna do that green thing anymore. Um, I just had someone give me feedback that they didn't like that. And that's the only feedback I've ever received about it. So if you like it and want it back, in other classes let me know, but someone said they didn't like it. So that's all I've ever heard about it. So that's why I removed it, but I increased the cursor size. So hopefully you can still see the cursor. Um, so I'm gonna reduce the amount of noise here because I just think it's too much. And I'm gonna turn off spring because when you have spring on, it is a dynamic simulation. And when we're scrubbing the timeline, it's gonna get kind of wonky um, as it's trying to calculate. So as the one we have now, we can see it's kind of rotating more than the example that I just showed. So let's select the plane and let's get the timeline to be the whole timeline. And I wanna see these in the graph editor. So I'm gonna to go to Windows Animation Graph Editor and we can see that all the animation is happening on Rotate Z. So I'm gonna isolate that by selecting it. And I want it to start start over here on the left and I want it to go the other direction because I don't want it to reveal this top left corner where we're going to have the offset. I want that to maintain its scale through all the rotations we're about to do. So I want to change this up. So we have negative uh, uh, 630. I'm just going to move all this to zero, the, to start at zero. And then when we select this, we can just remove the negative and it will uh, scale it, put it going in the opposite direction, the same value, right? So now we're go just going in this other direction. So it's kind of ending in that corner. It's going a little fast. We want it to start on the left side. So right now we're starting on the right side and it's going about one and a half to one and a quarter turns. So let's first get the left side working. So let's move this and I'm just selecting both keyframes, shift and middle mouse dragging it. And I want this to start over here. And so it started over there and it's going to it's still going too far. We want it to kind of end um, in that corner. So now it's starting the left. And the, I think it's also the ramp. Um, see how it's already starting to affect it. I, the plane might need to be bigger. So let's make sure we don't have keys on the scale because I'm about to scale it up. So yeah, we only keyframed the rotations. So now when we scale it, we don't have to worry about it um, being animated scale. And I think it's also just has to do with the speed of the ramp. So we, it's just kind of a lot of back and forth here, right? It's just making sure that the ramp animation is working with rotation animation. So let's drag that out. Cause let's see the, the ramp animation ends around frame 128 we can see right there. And this will end about there too. Okay, starting here. 
I just want to make sure these are synced up. So I'm selecting the ramp and yeah, so they're pretty close. Let's see what we can't do. I, I don't want to reveal this corner yet. So I'm trying to figure out, we need to stretch this out. I want that left corner to still see. So let's grab the helper and move it. So it's, I'm going to delete these two because it's just distracting. Let's see if we're, yeah, I mean, the other thing we need to deal with is the fact that the end of it isn't ending where we want it to. So we still need to bring this down so that's ending in the right place. And then we just need to figure out what is going on with the ramp that it's revealing this side. And I'm actually just going to turn off in the display because I want to see what it's doing as it's rotating. So I hit P in the display. Remember when we did that? So now I can actually see what it's doing as it's rotating. And I'm going to isolate it. So I'm going to click on this little button. So now all we're seeing is the ramp. So it looks like the ramp is coming on too soon. I think that's all it is. The ramp is coming on too soon. So it's hitting this top left corner of this thing. <clears throat> so um, we just need to delay the ramp animation a little bit. And so, you know, I, I want to show every step of the process like this because anytime you're working in 3D, it's not going to be super cookie cutter like click this button and then it's all done, you know, like there's a lot of back and forth in animating in 3D. And if anyone tries to teach you otherwise, then they're doing it wrong and they're doing you a disservice because then you're going to get into it and realize that's not what it's like at all. And you get stuck a lot and now you don't know how to troubleshoot because they never taught you um, their process, right? This is all just a process. This isn't like you know, easy bake oven stuff here. If you're an American, you understand that reference maybe and old enough. Um, yeah. So, so what we decided to, was the ramps happening too soon. So I'm selecting all the, as, as I was talking, saying that I forgot what we were doing. We're going to delay the animation of this, right? Cause the, the ramps happening too soon. So I'm just going to drag this over. So now we got it, all right? It's, it's still, happening a little bit it's no it's pretty good I might I might delay just a little bit more so it catches we, we keep more of that yeah this is what I'm talking about yeah that's what I'm talking about now we just need to adjust this just a little bit um, I want it to stay in this corner See, this is what it, I mean, this is what it takes if you want to get very specific. Like, I want this to happen like this. You have to start to get very specific with what you're doing. So I think there's going to be a really uh, uh, sweet spot here. I'm going to go to uh, curves, weighted tangent. So now I can pull these handles out. I think there's going to be a sweet spot on the time of when the ramp starts and uh, the rotation. So I want this to start slower so that it gets more of that corner. But I still want it to start, so I don't want to totally move the keyframes now. Yeah, it's just barely. I'll just do like a couple frames. Yeah, that was like maybe two or three frames. Yeah. See how it's it's keeping that top left corner? That's what I want. The other thing we could do is we could animate the scale of this thing just to have even greater control if we wanted to end sooner, but we still like the noise and like, you know, if we move one curve, it's changing all the animation, right? Cause there's just two keyframes. Um, we could add more keyframes. So it's basically like mile markers, like, Hey, I'm, I'm holding down I and middle mouse clicking to set a keyframe there on that. We could get here and say, all right, just end, go, go faster, right? But then we might have this weird transition, maybe not. 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. So that's what I want. <laughs> so now let's do the offset super quick. We've already done it with scale. Um, and one quick thing I also want to talk about is the spring node for these. So we, when we made the spring uh, node earlier, we have it affect position, rotation, and scale. We only want it to affect scale because if you remember, we have the maximum translational value to be the width of these little cubes when they're small. But if we look at how far we want these objects to come from, uh, maybe you know this far, it's probably like four or five units away. If the cube is moving five units, woo, real fast, sorry, these terrible sound effects, it moves real fast, and then it springs 0.25, that's like nothing, right? So we want it to spring a lot more when it's coming from a further distance. So we need to turn off the position. We don't want this spring to affect it. We'll add another spring to affect the, um, I'm just gonna name the scale. We're gonna add another spring to affect the position. So this offset, we wanna rename as scale as well so we can keep track of which offset. So now we're when we go into the mash waiter, and ha click add offset we only want this to i mean we could we could turn these off but you know we're, we're only gonna affect these so uh, we want this to affect the position so now in this offset node let's we can see uh y is up positive y is up positive x is to the right, and we want these to go in the top left, so that means we need a positive y and a negative x. So when we look at this, it's x, y, z, so we need a negative x, so let's say negative uh, four, and negative four, so it's even, or sorry, four, positive four, because we're going up. You can see any, any direction these are pointing here in the lower left, um, that is positive, right? So forward here is positive, to the right is positive, up is positive. So we know why there needs to be positive and this negative x needs to be negative because it's going to the left. Okay, so the whole thing moved though. If we turn this on and off, we can see the whole thing moved and we only want a part of it. So let's scroll down here to the falloff object area, right click and say create. Now we have a falloff object we can animate. How cool is that? Well, we only want it to affect this kind of corner here. And let's do something like this. And I can also use click this and make sure it's it's only moving in that plane in those two axes when you click this little square, right? Now it's only gonna move forward and up and down and not side to side. So anyway, anytime you're doing something like this, you're gonna make sure you're not you know, going in Z space when you don't wanna be with it, then um, you can use these handles. So let's get it to a good start position and then we can animate this down. So now let's get the camera in where we wanna see it uh, how it's affecting it. Let's move it up a little bit. I think it's affecting things too low because I don't want to really see those until we get up here. So now we can start animating it probably in here-ish. So let's um, make sure we have it selected in the outliner because there are two different parts to a falloff node. There's the shape node and the transform node. If you select the falloff object from its node, from the whatever node it's attached to, if I double click it here to select it, this is its shape node. You can see it says shape right here. We can't animate this in the translation. If we go over to the channel box, you can see there's no translation tab, right? Because it's the shape node, it's not the transform node. We have the transform node, which is what is always in the outliner over here. So when we click that, now we have the translation rotation. It's just a little gotcha moment uh, you might run into if you're selecting things through here and then you try to animate it um, and you try to animate the translation of this, it's not gonna work. <laughs> there is no translation on a shape node. It's all on transform. So we have it selected in the outliner. Let's hit Shift W because we're only going to be animating the translation values. And let's just pull it away. And we wanna pull it only as far away as the very edge of this thing so that it's a, it's a smooth ease out kind of affecting it. And I want a greater fall off here um, because it's pretty even. So the way we can do that is change the inner zone to be 
you know, the closer it is up here, the, the further away it's going to be. So I like that a lot more, and I want to get rid of these lines. So the way we get rid of those lines, let's go back to the offset and just introduce some random strength here. So now that we got rid of those kind of even lines because I want it to look a little more chaotic there. And now we just can shift click and drag this and then left click the middle handles here to move it down because it's, it's not happening soon enough for me. Okay, that's happening too soon. So we're just gonna have to do this back and forth until, yeah. Because I want that to kind of be the last thing that we see Maybe even drag it out so it happens over a longer period of time. Yeah. And then once we add a spring, this will look really good. And I want this to, I want the inner zone of this thing to be even more, I think. So I'm gonna click this, increase the inner zone, because I want these to be traveling from a greater distance. Yeah. And I want this to happen a little slower still. Yeah, so because I want that to kind of be like the little flourish at the end are these kind of final pieces coming into place. And how I'm thinking about this as far as a design perspective is the fact that we have up until now, we've had the only animation we've had is in this direction, right? Front to back. That's the only animation we have. What I want to introduce to make it more interesting, just think about how can I make it more interesting and then simplify it down. Describe what you've done. I've animated this thing front to back. All right, well, that means you haven't done things side to side yet, right, or diagonal. So start to introduce those things if you wanna make it more complex. So, and complexity is not always a good thing. That's just whether you wanna do that or not. Okay, so now we have that fall off object animation done. Let's add spring back in. So I'm gonna go back to the mash waiter, add spring, and I want this to only affect position, so I'm going to turn off the other ones. And I want to go to, let's just leave it in real time. I'm going to open up the playback speed. I right clicked on the timeline, went to playback speed, and then tore off that menu. So let's see where it ends up. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a little slow for my taste, so I'm going to bring this back down. Cool. So I like that. The other thing we could do is add, let's go back to offset and add a little bit of uh, negative Z, like it's coming from behind a little bit. So it'll be negative two. Let's see what that does. So now it's, because what I'm thinking of when it springs, I'd like to see it come forward just a little bit. Let's do more negative, um, negative four. I wanna see this thing spring forward. Yeah, there we go. So when we're watching this, yeah, cool. So in this lesson, we learned how to adjust the ramp settings, the map helper, and separate the, uh, and I'm just gonna name this spring node position, separate aspects of the spring and offset, add multiple offset nodes, animate a fall off object. We did a lot in this lesson. And the next one we will continue and make a whole new thing. We'll learn something totally new, motion paths, and eventually add a trail to, to it. Uh, it's a really cool piece of that. We're basically going to be making this part. And we're gonna attach color stuff to it. It's gonna be really cool. All right, thanks for watching.